muốn nói muốn nói xin lỗi tại vì trưởng Chris không có nói tiếng Việt giỏi lắm thì cái webinar này trưởng Chris thì nói tiếng Anh nhưng mà ai um, cần nói tiếng Việt thì trưởng Chris hiểu hết um, so if you want to speak in Vietnamese or type it out I can understand but this webinar will be in English uh, so first and foremost I want to say thank you to everyone thank you to um, a bunch of Han Jum Ung and for all of you for being here today This is the first webinar series, and I'm gonna, again, the format, I'm gonna try to keep it within 20 minutes and then we can do a Q&A. In a perfect world, I actually love presenting in person. So doing it over um, doing it over Zoom for me, I wanna try to make it as engaging as possible, but also um, just doing our best to kind of support in this format. Um, before I start, oops. I was thinking maybe if um, everyone can, I just kind of want to get a sense of where people are from. So I don't know if everyone can just type in the chat, maybe your Duan, Lian Duan, uh, maybe your position, just so we can get, a, I can get a sense of who the audience is actually. So I'll give everyone like 30 seconds to type that into the chat. Okay, cool. Oh, I forgot, and I should say that I am um, from Lien Doan Ngon Saom, Doan Tang Tien. Okay, so we have a pretty good range of a national audience. That kind of makes me a little nervous, but that's okay. Also, if you're if you're driving, don't type. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to put that disclaimer out there. Um, cool. So actually, two years ago, I was helping at and Lynn invited me to guest teach at a Gup Mo and Gup High camp um, in Lien Duan, Yamin Savio. And so this is kind of like a, a shorter, abridged version of that presentation. So if you were there, um, some things might seem really re repeated. Okay, and so. To, this is a brief agenda of what I would like to go over today. Um, I'm trying to keep it as you know useful as much as possible, but really we're going to be uh, really framing and understanding how we can support um, our GAC AM who have you know diverse needs, disabilities, and uh, what I really am doing is introducing a a framework to help GAC Jung and you know, the local bunch up hand, maybe be more creative and intentional of how they can support and include GEC AM. Um, again, just a little bit about me. I'm a Huynh Chiang and Duan Tang Tian and Lin Dong Wun Song. Uh, as it was mentioned before, I work as uh, I work as a school psychologist. I work at the high school level. Um, Beyond Tungi, some of the things that really um, drive me and my ministry is I'm also involved with a prison ministry in my local diocese where I work with kids and do Bible studies and visits with the kids who are incarcerated. And a lot of what I do is working in communities and populations that are, you know, underserved or they struggle with poverty. And so a lot of my experiences has kind of shaped me to have a more um, social justice lens, especially in living out my faith and then really bringing me back to the gospel message of love and inclusion. And so that's just a little bit about me and hopefully you can get a sense a bit more about me throughout the presentation. Um, so just for brief discussion, I just wanted to see, um, you know, when you hear disability or special needs or diverse needs, what are your initial thoughts? Like, what do you think about kind of what resonates with you when we come across this topic? And again, I'm going to use the chat. I'm going to give everyone just one minute, maybe think about it and maybe type a brief answer. And then again, in the chat, people can, you know, read each other's responses. And this is just a way for us to kind of Maybe break the ice. Okay, so I'll give everyone a minute. Again, when you hear disability or special needs, um, what are your initial thoughts?
Now, as people are still typing in the responses, I just wanted to share a little bit about kind of my own understanding and perception of disability. Um, really briefly, I when I grew up, I had an uncle who had a disability, a mental disability. He struggled with schizophrenia, but um, it was kind of scary as a kid, and he would be violent at times or threaten to harm my family and my parents. And so when I think growing up, I definitely had a very negative view of disability, and I felt like it was like a disease that was contagious. And even, again, I think with a lot of the stigma, especially in our Vietnamese um, community and families, oftentimes those with disabilities are kept hidden. Those are, they're not talked about. An example would be um, my parents would threaten me and my brother. If we didn't get good grades, they would compare us to my uncle. Like, oh, do you want to be like your uncle? Like, then you better get straight A's. And so my, again, my uh, perception towards disability was quite negative. And I always, I was actually kind of very scared, even in public spaces. And so, you know, reflecting back, I think it's interesting that now that most of my work as a school psychologist, or I should say all of it is really supporting um, students, children with disabilities. Thank you everyone for sharing. I'm going to continue. Um, this one you don't have to share um, in the chat, but I just want, um, I want you to reflect uh, like a moment of reflection. Like what are your feelings and what are your attitudes when encountering those with disabilities? I shared a little bit about um, my own experiences and my family and kind of my own, um, kind of like the attitudes within my family. Um, I do think that there a lot of the stigma is getting a little bit better, but I definitely know that you know it's difficult, especially um, in our culture, really to kind of even acknowledge, uphold, or embrace um, disability. I also think it's very important to take time to reflect on our own attitudes, right? Like, you know, oftentimes we may have biases or even like the way we word things can be um, deficit-based or more negative than not. Oftentimes we think of what people can't do versus maybe their strengths or what they can do. Um, and next, I think, you know, as Huynh Chiung, as people supporting, you know, part of uh, Fung Chiao, we also have to tie in our faith. And for me, I definitely ground myself in Catholic social teaching. I think about kind of the main tenets of the life and dignity of everybody. I think about option for the poor and vulnerable. Um, but when I use the word poor, it's kind of broadly inclusive of those who've struggled, those who have been historically struggling, um, those who've been marginalized, pushed aside, um, demonized, otherized, and so I definitely believe that God's call for all of us as Huynh Chiung really is to kind of really reach out. And again, the, the Bible verse that really resonates with me and is a spirit that I try to carry is um, whatever you do the for the least, you do for me, right? So our work and our efforts towards supporting individuals who are oftentimes pushed aside or forgotten, it's really our efforts to get to know God more and to embrace God wholly. And so I wanna just remind and ground everyone in that as well. And with that being said, and you know, just precursor, a lot of what I'm gonna share today is really seeking to challenge how can we love, include better support. And so, um, you know, what I mentioned will never be that of exclusion or separation versus how can we more meaningfully include. So I work in public schools, and if anyone works in the public schools, teachers, school psychs, um, there's a framework that we use. It's called multi-tiered systems of support. I'm just going to briefly talk about it because I kind of adopt it and am inspired from it. But basically, what it says is that when we're supporting students, either academically or behaviorally, you know, you start where in the image you see tier one, like what are we doing school-wide, classroom-wide? to support our students, whether it's improving school climate, whether it's good instruction, inclusive instruction. If kids don't respond well to that school-wide, classroom-wide 
support, then you move on to tier two, right? So maybe the students who are quote unquote at risk, the kids who need a little bit more help, what are we doing at that level? And then tier three are the, for our more intensive students of, in, you know, students with disabilities, special education, they kind of fall under this, what, how can we support them? So that's kind of like a, a 30 second spiel of multi-tiered systems of support or MTSS. I'm try, I try to kind of adopt this framework. So it's not exactly the same in the school system, but you know, if you think about where we are and how TUNI is structured, there are ways of systems and how we can view supporting GEC AMP through these systems. And so again, it's not exactly MTSS, but it's an attempt. Um, so I just called it a comprehensive ap approach to support, oops, to supporting Don Sin. And I talk about, like, I kind of use the same la uh, language, tier one, tier two, tier three, but in this case, tier one would be your whole Duan. Tier two would be your Ngan or your gut, And tier three would be more of like the individual level um, and so I'm just going to go through that. So tier one at the Duan level, really, we're asking ourselves, you know, how can we support and include all Gak Am, Huin Zheng, Fu Huin, and community members? Um, so when we're looking at the larger Duan events, right, um, camps, maybe having Ba Hua Ting campaigns or having like workshops or trainings for Huin Zheng, right, maybe we are connecting with parents and community members or knowing um, dioceses and local resources, right? Really, we're trying to focus on what can we do at the Duan level when we think about these kids who have diverse or different needs, right? Are we collaborating with our community? Do we know what our resources are? You know, oftentimes, you know, a, a lot of systems, we work in silos, but, you know, think about how supporting Gak Am with disabilities, it's not just a Tuny thing, right? You know, there are people with dis disabilities in all domains and all organizations. Maybe think about your own parish, right? Is there Yao Li? Is there a confirmation program? Is there something that your parish is doing already? Is there something that your diocese is doing already to support, um, to support members who have diverse needs? Right. And again, I think like if you notice too, like the right, the culture of the Huinchungs or the culture of Gurduan, that kind of falls under here as well, right? Are we having conversations where we're being intentional with planning events to include Gak Am? An example I can give is like um I know in my Duan, oftentimes I know more in Onyi and Tunyi, we have kids, you know, who have autism or on the spectrum. Um, and they'll, they'll show up to Sinhua, but most of them don't go to Duan camps or maybe the other events. Um, and so for me, I think about like, how can we be more intentional with inviting them? But then it also makes me think, yeah, we can invite them. But if we are uh, maybe not thinking about them when planning our events, right? When we think about, are there activities that they can join in meaningfully? Are there opportunities for connection with the other kids or with Huinchungs? These are just ways of thinking about, again, spreading more awareness and really kind of looking at the culture of our Duan. The other example I gave here is like, let's say we do Baha Ting, and I know that this is something that we already do as Fum Chao, but, you know, what if we added a dimension to Baha Ting where one of the things we can focus on is kindness or inclusion or reaching out to those who need help or those who are different. Um, again, these are just different um, examples that we can do on the larger level. So at the next level, we're looking at the Ngan and Gup. And, you know, one of the nice things is now we're kind of looking at this, um, a group of kids that are similar in age. And again, the question is, how can we support and include Gak Am more within their Ngan or their Gup? Some of the ideas and suggestions, um, I know that uh, Bexi Thumb has have, has some lessons that she created to, you know, really supporting um, different kids and uh, to address maybe like how to treat others, to how to include others. And again, I think targeting more age specific lessons, right? Our curriculum on kindness and morality is something that would definitely help. 
Um, I, I put in there conflict mediation and restorative practices. Like if you notice that maybe the, the, gap, the, the child, the student who is maybe being excluded by the rest of the gun, maybe we can notice that and be intentional with trying to support our kids and really teaching them again, grounding ourselves in right the, the gospel message of really love, support and inclusion. Again, right, when we're having, if we plan camps and we plan retreats and we have like none days, sport days, right, think about which kids we have who maybe are struggling and who don't always are able to um, participate meaningfully. Can we maybe plan certain activities? Can we adjust things within our schedule um, to include them? And I also think too, and I, I, I might mess, uh, I don't know if I include my next slide, let me see Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. But yeah, so really, again, it's being creative at the gun level, right? How can we support these kids, you know, with their peers? Because, you know, more often than not, like, I, I kind of want to take a step back from this lesson, too, and, and invite everyone to just imagine. Um, oftentimes, I work with students in special education. And so more often than not, if they kind of present with more intensive needs, like they are already separated from their gen ed peer, their general education peers. They're oftentimes already kind of pushed in a classroom in the corner of the campus that no one sees. And so for me, when I think about Tune Yi and I think about what Tune Yi has done for me and helping me uh, have friends, have peer groups, right? These kids want the same thing. And you know, yes, they do have needs that kind of impact impact maybe how they go about doing it. But deep down in their heart, they want to belong. They want to participate and engage, or they just want to feel like you know they ha they have friends are well supported. And if you think about what their parents go through too, like that's kind of what their parents want for them, right? A lot of the parents who I've worked with, you know, express how they just want their kids to have peer groups, to have supports, to, you know, essentially to fit in. And I think Tuny is a, a great space for that, right? Um, and so again, just taking that into consideration when we are in these positions of, of power, as or whichever position, if you have the ability to really meaningfully include, right, Gek and with different, different needs, yes, it, it does take a little bit more work, but again, it, I, again, I ground myself in, you know, it's, it's what God calls us to do. Um, the last tier is like the individual, how can we support and include Gek Am who have more intense behaviors and or disabilities? I'm, I'm for, for this tier, I'm really thinking about the kids who like, um, are maybe have a lot more um, difficulties, whether it's socializing, interacting, staying in line, uh, being quiet or sitting still. I think about safety, right? I, I I put here, always consider safety first. I've heard stories of there's Duans where, you know, there might be Duan Sin who like to run away or run off church grounds. Uh, we also, we always need to consider safety, whether it's working closely with parents, asking them to stay at Sinhua and to maybe observe or be an extra eye. I don't know the resources of every Duan out there, but if you have enough Huinchen or Hipsi Jumtan where you have like a one one to one Huinchen to kid ratio, maybe they can support in that way and you can be creative with, you know, switching different Huinchen or um, Hipsi Jumtan every week to support um, Gak Am. Um, I also think about too, like, if you know if you're at a play at a duan where maybe there's not enough huinchung or maybe you guys are overburdened but you still want to try to include the duan sin you know it's okay i think it's okay to ask parents like hey can you come and stay and um, just be an extra set of eyes for like for safety or or even if that's not you know that's still too much um you know consider like hey maybe can if we can have little little tommy just come every other week or you know or we can incorporate him that way. So then it kind of gives people and Duan's more manpower to like know the, the days that, you know, little Tommy's coming. Um, I talk about really knowing the kid, knowing the child oftentimes. And again, this is from my experiences. I feel like 
sometimes we don't know, really know our gak am or these individuals, right? Do we know what they like? Do we know what activities, um, what activities they enjoy doing? Do we know their favorite snacks or favorite games? Um, and I also think too, like, I put here, like, that's a great opportunity to utilize Deutsche Ung and Deutsche Fall, right? Maybe assigning them to, to work with or to help and support during Sinhua or during events. I think that'll be a good opportunity for really, for a meaningful leadership, right? And I think a leadership that matters. And then I also say, you know, it's always good to consult, consult with your church community members, consult, because you'd be surprised with, you know, how many resources there truly are out there. Um, my last two bullet points, I found, I forgot which diocese it was, but I found this individual religious education plan where they kind of tried to adopt kind of what the school does for their students like for catechism but basically it's kind of just like a how do you get to know the student right what does the parent or the student desire this form talks about you know if there's any certain health or medical conditions that the team needs to know if there's any um, safety concerns um, this is kind of long and complicated and I will leave it to be posted soon later but something that I created that's much simpler and, you know, feel free to adopt it is you just can do a little more with gathering information. I know, like I said, I know sometimes uh, parents might be a bit hesitant with sharing about disability or whatnot, but, you know, I kind of put here like a, a simple parent interview form of, you know, we would like to get to know your kid, what best supports them. Like, what do you desire for them? What are their favorite things? What are their strengths? What are their positive qualities? And then, you know, number four, what areas does your child require growth and improvement? Are there any disabilities or difficulties that they face? What supports work for them when it comes to their learning? Any behavioral health concerns, right? So this is just kind of like an interview form that can be incorporated at the beginning of the year when you do registration. It's just a suggestion, just such uh, just an idea to get to know the kid a bit more. And I think consulting with parents and working closely is very important. I am I'm also a big um, advocate, you know, to listen to the student voice, right? They these kids know themselves best, probably. And so maybe again, doing the extra step of getting to know um your Duan Sin, and you know, even those with disabilities, you can definitely learn a lot about them. You can learn from them, what works for them, what doesn't. And so these are examples. I um again, I'll leave it, I'll leave it here. I'm sure we'll have a resource area um, where I can upload the material. Um, lastly, I just want to reiterate. Um, I know I gave a lot of solution or suggestions, but um, I know that it, this is, it's not a one size fit all versus what I really did was try to give some suggestions and a, a way of thinking, a way of approaching. But for me at the, at the heart of it as a Huin Xiong, it's important to acknowledge, right? If we looked at it at these different levels, starting from the bottom to the top, right? How can we foster an inclusive space for all within Duan to imitate a beloved community, to really bring the kingdom of God here on earth, within our Duan, within our Sinhua? How can we teach and promote Gak Am to love and meaningfully include all peers, regardless of differences? How can we love unconditionally and support those who present with more um, difficulties that may require more patience? Um, I know as Huen Jiung, um, sometimes we feel like we have to be the expert to do something, right? Like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not trained in special education. I can't help. I don't know the skills. But I'm a big believer that when it comes to serving in Tiung Yi, like if we really go back to, you know, the gospel message of Jesus, like I really um, believe that that's kind of where we are most successful. If you were to ask me, like, what type of special education teachers are successful. I've worked with many. And honestly, the ones who actually you see do really well are the ones who love the kids, who are truly genuinely loving, um, right? And so I, uh, I just want to hold on to that and, you know, kind of encourage everyone. I think the fact that you're here is important and you obviously care. 
And so again, these are just, you know, suggestions and a framework for you to kind of approach it at different levels to see maybe what you or your duan can do. And, you know, this is, this is the kicker and this is uh, maybe my mic drop moment, but um, a lot of the things that I talked about today is not just for kids with disabilities. It really could be for kids with other needs and other things that really benefits all kids like you don't have to have a disability to be benefiting from these types of strategies and supports right so you know and oftentimes really in the field of disability study is when when you ad advance practices and promote practices for those with disabilities you actually advance and promote good practices for all people um, and so I just want you to keep that in mind um, I put here, I put a resource page. The The first one I say, navigate your local resources. Um, again, I think that's so important because you don't know what's out there like in your own communities unless you look. And then I just put a link to an educational resource of different like types of strategies of supporting kids in the classroom If um, though, for those who are interested and want to check it out. Um, lastly, just a, a quick closing reflection, just things for thought, uh, things for um, maybe for prayer, for thought, personal reflection. Um, what highlights or parts of today's presentation remain with you at this moment? What questions do you still have in regards to supporting GEC and with diverse needs? Um, I know I shared a lot. I talked a lot at you. Ideally, I would love more dialogue and more interaction in the lesson, but um, I do appreciate everyone for coming today. I think my next slide is thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, I need to update this slide. I have a VEYM email now, so I'm not going to put that. But anyways, I, that is it for today's presentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the floor for dialogue, for questions, Again, it's been a while since I've done Zoom. So if you wanna ask in person, like feel free, be brave, ask in person or ask out loud, I should say, unmute yourself. Or if you wanna ask your question, um, you can do it in the chat too. And so I will, we'll leave it at that. Thank you, everyone. Chị cảm ơn trưởng Chris rất nhiều. Uh, các em, uh, yeah, cảm ơn everyone who's listened to trưởng Chris. Uh, I would like to uh, follow the Chris uh, on your last few statement where, you know, M say that, you know, the uh, multi uh, system support my M share at different tiers, the framework to uh, look at serving the people with special needs or with diverse needs are not just for these people and could be for, you know, the typical people as well and link that to your first slide, you know, when we serve the poor and the marginalized, you were correct to say that, you know, the, the poor is not just poor in economic, you know, it could be poor in emotion, poor in, you know, the social circumstances, poor in the, uh, you know, in their thoughts at the time. So consider somebody, uh, you know, who, uh, you know, have families that parents just lost a job you know, and all parents are fighting or parents are separating or that person had to live with one family one week and go to another family another week. Or, you know, somebody who just got yelled at by the parents or by their significant other in the car. And so they may not show up to, you know, the uh, event in their whole heart, mind and soul. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see those people with special needs in a moment. And uh, as we aware, we observe, we notice, then not that uh, the lesson every day has to be done exactly the way we plan, but we modify it depends on the people and the mental state, uh, the physical state that uh you know, those people are at hand. So we would like to come on to Chris for those thoughts and to also share uh, with all the attendees that, you know, be aware of ourselves as well as aware of the people we serve. Could be a typical person, but they probably can have a special need in those one hour or two hours that they spend with us. So 
thank you very much. And uh, let's open it up for any question. Thank you. Yes, feel free to unmute or type your question in the chat. Um, Có some question uh, rồi đó, trưởng Chris. Nếu mà em đọc được vào trong cái chat. Yes, so I'm going to read one from Henry Nguyen. So as special need members grow up in the Duan, some of them to really look up to Kekje and express aspirations to become one as well. What are some guidelines we should consider once they reach the age of 18, move on from high school? Um, I don't I don't speak for Jim Ung, but I remember at the last um, training camp I helped out at, if you do have a Duan Sin who is 18, would like to become a Huin Jim, but they, you know, have... Um, disabilities that maybe is a struggle for them to pass camp, memorize their prayers. I mean, I remember An Lin sharing that just let let Jim Ung know, let Lin Duan know. Um, again, like we we try to be in inclusive, and sometimes the things that we have in place, it's hard for not everyone to maybe access or to do. But I think just be having open dialogue with you know the your needs of your Duan of your Duan Sin and letting your whether it's your Lin Duan Jim know or people level no it's um i believe that that is perfectly okay um, i don't know if maybe um and lin wants to chime in or and young wants to chime in to that first question yeah you em say the story của cái chữ ở dưới um uh test it you we have a letter can I, uh, uh, yes testing testing can everyone hear Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. So, cảm cảm ơn uh, trưởng um, trưởng Henry yes. in, in in raising the the question. Um, rather, yeah. Um, uh, you know, as as we look at um, all of us, we're, we're called to come to ministry, and in recognizing that many of us have special um, special needs, special circumstances, and the heart and the desire to serve and to be present in many different capacity. Um, so uh, in, in recognizing that and in recognizing the value of that particular member and all of this too, it's also on case by case basis, but in, in general, um, if that person is, is present and is supportive and is a uh, um, contributing force to the Doang, whether it be through the ministry of present journey to Mohammed Moi Ngoi, and which you that desire to be there, um, we as Pham Chao, turning that person away, um, not allowing the person, et cetera, a certain opportunity can, uh, it, it's, it's against our values. Now, at, at the same time, recognizing to the vocation and as long as in, in doing so, doesn't jeopardize the safety and the well-being of other members around. And then if that's something that we can certainly support, um, we certainly will review and do so. And so in the past, we have had um, um, who, may um, be confronted with certain challenges, but nonetheless, they're there and we'll work with Duan and Lindong, et cetera. Uh, we do support and promote um, uh, uh, individuals with that desire and aspiration to continue on. Now, along the way, it's, it's also delicate because uh, from an administrative uh, perspective, um, journeying and accompanying and helping uh, people to also understand because once you're you're in right well you know i also want cup high once you get cup high then i want cup high once i get cup high then i want who will be and so you know different level with different vocation different um expectation um all of that are factored in together but in terms of just uh a desire của một em đó muốn đồng hành phong trào nên bên cái đoàn nó for so long um we certainly take that into consideration and we have done so in the past and it's not just em uh uh, a Fernie um, uh, from Texas. Um, we have also had other individual uh, where um, that has proved to be beneficial to Kedoan. So hope that answered your question in terms of um, KKM who aspired to be Huynh Chưởng to Phong Chào. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the second question by uh, Charles Duan um, is about in regards to parents asking if they want to observe and help babysit. Um, what are boundaries that we should consider? For me, I think um, I always think about what are the needs of the kids, right? I think talking to the parent, what are their concerns? Why do they want to babysit? Now, if it's a safety concern and, um, you know, if you feel like as Huynh Jung or that it's not, you really do need the help of the parent, um, I can see in those situations. But I think I would definitely would just start if the question is kind of like, what are what are the parents' concerns? And then what are the actual needs of the kid, right? Do do they need parent to babysit every week? Um, and 
If not, I always encourage having maybe courageous conversations, difficult conversations. Um, in terms of like boundaries to consider, I'm not, I'm not sure how to answer that one just because, you know, I know I work in a school, so like there's different boundaries in a public school setting, but in terms of Luan, in terms of a church community, that that can be a question for, you know, your chat E as well. So hopefully I answered that question. Chị would like to add in uh, cái, uh, cái câu hỏi đó đó của uh, bác sĩ, uh, I mean, của pharmacist uh, Dr. Charles Duan. Thì, you know, I think it's a good opportunity for parents to journey. Uh, I mean, that's a big picture, right? Because we always want to bring people into phong trào. And how do we make them feel like, you know, this is part of their life, their belonging? Um, so when they when somebody asks suggests that you know uh, I would say from my perspective I would always say oh it's a great idea you want to journey with us you know because people always want to hear affirmative rather than want to hear oh no you know it looks you know you you want to ask your uh, you know you want to uh, make sure that you get the chain of command in uh, you know and prepare all these things ahead of time but the, the general thing she would recommend to say is yes you know that's a great thing to journey with uh phong trào you know and then giống như hồi nãy trưởng Chris hỏi you know what are the concerns but also explore in in the presentation trưởng Chris for nói know the child know the family so I asked you know how does he require supervision in different environment how does he do at school how does he do when he go out How does she, uh, you know, interact when she go to the restaurant, hala to shopping, he you yet, so that you know you see the big picture. What is this kid's ability? Like to Chris say, we approach from a strength base, uh, you know, and but you know, parents sometimes in a different environment they may be a little nervous, a little scared, uh, you know, have an opportunity for them to experience how uh, activities are, sometimes allay their anxiety uh, as well. So in uh, it, it's not um, easy to structure, but it's not quite complex in my uh, view. So you bring them in at certain hours, have them observe of activities. They don't have to be there all the time. You know, the different activities, like the weekly activity, uh, or like when we camp, There's different needs. So we explore what parents need, what kids need, how kids function in different environments. Thank you very much. Anyone else have any other suggestion? Thank you. No, absolutely. Anytime when có người, người um, cha mẹ muốn đồng hành với các em, muốn đến để mà cùng join với các em, it's always a, a welcome opportunity. Not only để mà hiểu biết phong trào, but also uh, from a risk and safety standpoint. Actually, cái câu hỏi của George, uh, uh, that, that's a blessing to have. Often we have women who then just drop off the kids and uh, uh, expect to need to uh, uh, cover it all from A to Z in the, in, in the full nine yard especially with những em với uh, special needs or diverse needs and um, đối với những đoàn and, and this is to share with with phong trào as well um, um, depending on, on the ratio number các khuôn trưởng mình có trong đoàn right if uh, we don't have the capacity to support and I know I've, I've, I've heard many đoàn with their struggle where they have multiple các em with diverse needs and thứ nhất các trưởng không có training thứ hai uh, we don't have enough staff And parents should drop off các em and expect, you know, uh, Doan to cover for the next three or four hours and just uh, take off. Um, if you're able to, then great. But if not, the conversation should also occur with the parents uh, so that the parents or the family can also um, offer um, or provide one-on-one um, -on -one support với các em đó, hoặc các em đó trong sinh hoạt. Uh, because that then can become a risk and safety issue to other M, to Doang, et cetera. And so it, it's always uh, an assessment that we all need to make um, uh, when we're facing a situation like. Yeah. 
and you know thêm nữa đó I would like to share that it doesn't have it not necessarily that unconditional acceptance right we have rules we have safety uh, you know uh, child uh, pro, uh, safety protection so we just politely and respectfully explain to these phụ huynh what are some of the guidelines and the rules for us and for Delta and that would be you know applicable to them as well you know so I'm not saying that you know we just accept them without because if we expose them to other children right then they should be uh, learning the child safety highlight you know uh, be fingerprinted and things like that so all of that is applicable Well, we just need to explain, give them expectation and guideline. Thank you. Ừ, có một người uh, có anh chị Anthony hỏi một câu kìa. Chris, hey? I'm sorry, I'm reading. Um, let's say we have a gifts of Jimtown with special needs who wants to help in Duan, but they are unable to teach. I want them to be included. But I struggle with thinking up of ways for them to besides doing things such as care and cleaning. How do you suggest we help these people feel more included? Um, well, I guess my first question goes to when you talk to your hip seat gym time, what how how do they feel included? Or do they want to teach? Um, if they do, then you know that's something you can work with. They don't, I'm not saying they have to teach, um, but maybe just getting their sense, hearing their voice, and what ways can they feel best included? maybe checking in with them. And again, you know, this is kind of what you do with all your huinching, right? Just because you become a huinching doesn't mean teaching is like your natural ability. You know, we all come with different skill sets that we can contribute with Duan. So maybe I, I, my first suggestion is talking with that individual and asking them how would, how would they like to meaningfully um, contribute? Um, and, you know, I believe that, you know, teaching, maybe teaching certain curriculum some it is you know skill people go through training teaching for that but not all of us here are you know credential teachers or anything and we still teach I think if we have the ability to share and dialogue especially with like the gospel lessons that's a way that's a form of teaching and you know maybe this person can't teach but they can share they can offer experiences and reflections and they have their own source of wisdom as well so You know, I think teaching in this sense can can look differently and you, you know, you can still learn, right? Um, maybe they might struggle to teach the curriculum, but again, I think there are other ways of how we, you know, learn and teach from uh, with one another. Hopefully I answered that question. And anybody uh, else uh, to chime in too? Yes, uh, thank you, John Christopher. Um, yes, I'll try that. Um, I think that the current case is I asked them, but they... On able to tell me what they can do either. Um, it's a bit of a special need, I would say. Um, but thank you. Yes, and I think the fact that you're even considering is is very um is very meaningful. It's very valuable. You know, I, again, I just if you're able to com maybe communicate with how they best feel included, I think that's a good start. She also would like to share. You know, maybe. Đoàn, uh, em đó đã trong đoàn của em, you know, for a certain amount of time. So what have you observed about this person? What are his strengths? Uh, what are his abilities? So, in, you know, instead of sharing, you know, when we prepare a lesson, if there are signs, you know, if there are movements to learn, is he able to do that? And can he, like, hold the whiteboard, you know, for some other to share? Can he sing? Can he dance? Can he, uh, you know, show off your uh, devices when you use as part of your learning strategies, teaching strategies? You know, can he collect uh, uh, tests? So uh, different things that you can put the team. So he would be part of the team, but, you know, but in any team, uh, each person have different functions. You know, I can only do certain things, but... I need other people to assist me in the function for us to fulfill our project and our goals. So look at it in a, in a broader way like that. So young to increase noise, it's not about standing up and sharing the lesson, but all the work that we do to make sure that the lessons are shared meaningfully and purposefully. 
um, do you think that that's a great way? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll share an anecdote. Um, so last week we we had a gathering with um, uh, Hipsi and also some Hipsi Chung Thanh, and uh, within uh, Trong Doang as well, we, we had a, um, a member with, um, uh, with with special needs. And uh, what we were doing, um, Station the Cross, and then very similarly to Ko Hoi Quang Anthony, um, certainly this person uh, would not be able to, to teach, nor if you were to ask, um, what are some of the things you can help with? Uh, often um, the answer is sort of unknown. But in, in observing and recognizing what this person can do, whether it be uh, this person sitting around or chơi cái gì đó, uh, uh, reading something, and, and observing and knowing that that's an ability that that person had, for example, this one, which is just basic reading. And so during the station of the cross, uh, there was a reflection for each station. And so as I invite different people to stand next to me um, to recite um, or to offer the, the already pre-written prayer, it was short, um, everyone did it. And I invited the person to do the same. So just as I stood next to other members, I also stood next to her and um, uh, we went through and uh, in, in the end, it was a uh, first time ever I've experienced with this one particular person at the end, after we're done, as we're walking, the person came up and uh, wrapped the hand around my my arm, kind of like uh, in, in, in a way, ohm, uh, uh, an expression of endearment. And it, it was quite um, it was quite moving. And I, I think the whole idea here is um, beginning to have an open heart and open mind of inclusivity in, in all the members, just because when we recognize that one individual may have uh, special needs uh, immediately in our mind it's you know I, well we can't include them to uh to a particular activity uh, that's all yeah. all right oh cảm ơn tất cả mọi người nha. thank you i think um it's a time for us to wrap it up here and uh, before we wrap it up i just want to um remind us uh thank you bang chung and especially bên hô quang chị đã giúp uh put cái slide so beautiful for the next three section and um, for the next session, we would have a topic about the eight ways of learning. So the objective is how to fit the different learning style of children with the diverse need, right? It's not so much about the traditional learning way like reading and writing and stuff like that. So um, bác sĩ thanh tâm chị sẽ đến và có những cái um, uh, different learning để mình có thể mình các huynh trưởng có thể use it, um, for những cái em có cái uh, diverse need ở đoàn của mình nhé. Yeah? Um, Oh, with that, thì uh, mọi người cứ nhớ dùng đó là is on the second Wednesday của mỗi tháng uh, và đã bắt đầu lúc 9 giờ uh, uh, 9 giờ PM của Eastern Time. The next week, uh, next month nó là April 10. Và nếu mà những ai mà có những cái câu hỏi gì mà liên quan đến cái topic, if you have any question, uh, you want to post before cái session đó, thì please use this link. And eventually, we will share this link into the, the chat. Uh, nó cũng không có khó là H and W help and uh, wellness question for the next topic section easy cái link nó chỉ vậy thôi và nó dùng cái link của phong trào của mình nhé and then any other question uh, I have feedback suggestion for another topic or whatever please send an email to thisveym.wellness at gmail.com I believe anh Dương cũng text cái email này với cũng nói rằng là if you have any uh, a special case or whatever you want to reach out and ask for, uh, to for guidance or help or whatever please also use this email for the health and wellness uh, team nhé. Ok, with that, không biết là cha thông còn ở đây hay không, nhưng mà nếu, nếu không thì con mời Sơ Huyền đi, con thấy có Sơ Huyền ở đây, chắc mời Sơ Huyền giúp tụi con dân lời cùng nguyện wrap up cho tụi con trong tối hôm nay nha Sơ Huyền. Sơ Huyền chắc không có ở đây. Ok, vậy thôi. Um, uh, nếu như vậy thì thôi chắc... Um, còn cha thông không, cha thông? Anh Linh cứ wrap up đi rồi uh... Chào chúc lành nhé Dạ rồi, Anh cứ rồi. wrap up đi uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. Vâng, vậy uh, một lần để chúng con cảm ơn tất cả uh, quý cha, quý sơ, tất cả quý anh chị em môn trưởng, quý viên, tất cả những presenter và tất cả những anh chị em who have put a lot of uh, thought and mind cho những cái sinh hoạt của đoàn của mình và đặc biệt là quan tâm đến uh, các em có cái diverse needs cái sự hiện diện của các trưởng ở đây ngày hôm nay đến 50 mấy người nó cho thấy rằng là um, các trưởng rất là quan tâm và thương yêu tất cả những các em đó và không phải chỉ cả các em đó và đặc biệt là cho những gia đình đó uh, we help them a lot khi mà phụ huynh mà có con em như vậy mà họ được mình welcome đến đoàn I think that's so meaningful for them and it's, it's nothing they can say thank you to us when they can help their kids around us and then um, participate với những em khác 
cho nên những cái hy sinh của các trưởng ở các đoàn và nên những cái uh, suy tư và lo lắng của các trưởng mà các trưởng hiện hôm nay đó là cái điều rất là quý và cảm tạ Chúa đã có những anh chị em huynh trưởng luôn luôn đồng hành với phong trào và lo lắng cho tất cả các em đoàn sinh và đặc biệt các em cần sự giúp đỡ đặc biệt hơn à, với cái đoạn thì uh, linh xin mời mọi người chúng ta cùng nhau uh, tán động trong giải pháp trong giây lúc thì chúng ta nhìn lại uh, ngày sinh hoạt của chúng ta chúng ta cảm tạ Chúa vì những ơn Chúa ban và chúng ta cũng nhìn lại những thiếu sót mà chúng ta đã làm trong ngày để rồi chúng ta sẽ cùng nhau ăn, ăn năn một cách trọn để chúng ta rút lại thiên liêng hát kinh dân đêm và xin cha thông sẽ chúc lành cho chúng ta à, trong đêm nay nhé chúng ta dành giây phút để chúng ta lắng động và nhìn lại à, cái sinh hoạt của chúng ta trong ngày hôm nay bây giờ chúng ta cứ cùng nhau đọc kinh thánh ngang tội xin chúa um, anh đang tha thứ tất cả những thiếu sót của chúng ta trong ngày chúng ta xứng đáng chuẩn bị đón chúa vào lòng lạy chúa con chúa là đứng chọn tốt chọn lành vô cùng chúa đã dựng nên con và cho con chúa ra đời chịu nạn chịu chết vì con mà con đã cả lòng phán nghịch lộ như công chúa thì con lo buồn đau đớn cùng chê ghét mọi tội con trên hết mọi sự con dốc lòng chịu cãi và nhờ ơn chúa thì con sẽ lánh xa dịp tội, cũng làm việc đền tội cho xứng. Amen. Chúng ta cầu mở rộng tâm hồn, chỉ khôn và hiểu biết của chúng ta thì chúng ta mời đón nhận Chúa Giêsu thánh thể vào trong tâm hồn chúng ta trong đêm hôm nay. Lạy Chúa Giêsu thánh thể, con yêu mến Chúa, xin Chúa ngự vào tâm hồn con và ở lại với con luôn mãi. Amen. Trời đã xế chiều, giê ơi, con nhờ tay mẹ Maria, mà dâng lên Chúa, dâng chúc lời cảm ơn, dâng chót ca xác hồn, các việc con làm, các lời con xin, cùng với mọi khó nguy con chiều chót một ngày qua, cùng với bóng chiều ta. Giêsu Maria, con hòa ca dâng về nơi bao la. Chúa ở ban phép lành một đêm ngủ an bình, hồn trong xác tươi sinh. Tiếp tục với mời cha thông. Chúa cùng anh chị em. Ở cùng cha. Và xin thiên chúa toàn năng là cha và con và thánh thần ban phúc lành cho anh chị em. Amen. Amen. Chúc anh chị em một buổi tối an lành. Rồi cảm ơn Linh, cảm ơn uh, trưởng Quiz, cảm ơn tất cả. Amen. I invite everyone. Is there an expression button here? Let's give trưởng Chris a big round of applause. I, I see. I'm used with teams. Oh, we have. Yeah. Them on. Yeah. 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 Y
All right. Awesome. All right. Right. Come on, Chris. Thank you. Have a blessed okay. day, everyone. Come on, Chad. Okay, Come on. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. 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 Good rồi ờ, này mình đá người ta ra được ha ngầu được nha. chứ được chứ được chứ <cười> <cười> không có đá không phải I'm kidding I'm kidding we can do the same on uh, on teams too team 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 anh nhường người không okay. rồi maybe bye uh, Brian bye Brian, Brian. Uh, hậu Brian to have việc uh, well, thanks everyone uh, yes. do, 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 do. Say, and, uh, Good night. Mm, 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 mm. Then, uh, yeah, I'll And then remove. Mm, 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 okay, mm. how? Rồi, gần, gần người cuối cùng. Okay. All right, mm. we're done. Good job, Chris. All right, good job. How does it feel, Chris? Thank you. It was good. I personally, I'm not a fan of doing things virtually because I'm just staring at my presentation. Okay time and so it's hard for me to or I naturally look around at who I'm talking to to kind of see their mm -hmm. level of engagement if I need mm -hmm. to left and right. Okay. okay. Un un understandable. It goes the same for all of us. Uh, I, 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 